what would a caricature of you be like? That's the key question. How can you become a caricature version of yourself? Now, not in terms of how you think where it's like, uh, you know, you're walking, someone's like, can I draw a caricature picture of you? No, no, no. But if you were to think of you as the hero of a movie, supercharging the authentic you, what would that look like? You think of me, guess what? A lot of you, the majority of you, you don't know me. You have no idea who I am. You know the caricature supercharged version of me you see online. You also, even right now in this moment, this is the supercharged version of me. I don't talk like this at home. I don't answer the phone like this. <laughs> this is Julian and no, I don't do that. For real. This is supercharged. So what's a caricature version of you? And when you see people who have charisma, ask yourself, instead of how can I be like them, what is my version of that? That's the key. Even in terms of the content, it's not about that. It's if I say something, for example, that I find funny that makes me feel good, what you should be thinking is, well, what could I say that would also make me feel as good? That's the question. It's always bringing it back to you, turning the mirror around. What's my version of that? If you think of me, and even for those of you who follow me for a while, right? Like who here has been, who's known about me for over five years? Raise your hand. A lot of you. Over, let's say 10 years. So even a few. Guaranteed, those of you for over 10 years, even five years, there's some certain, you could say, stories or, or things about me that stand out. If people ask you, like, so who's this drooling guy? First thing is probably, he's a little crazy. That's, that's for sure number one, right? It's like, oh, he's a little crazy, you know, he's a little out there, he's a little extreme. I was always extreme. Even before all this, as a kid, I was extreme. I was like kind of extreme humor, extreme stuff. That's me at a core. It's not something new. That was me, and I supercharged it. I brought it into my personality. I brought it into my brand. I harnessed it, and I based it on authenticity. There's also some, probably some crazy facts where it's like, oh, you, you know, there was a time where you really liked this like, funny vampire diary show. That was true. That's very unique. But it also plays into the image you have of me. Okay, this kind of crazy vampire diary, drama, messed up sense of humor, da da da, but also intense. And there's like, there's all this stuff that goes together that forms me, the caricature version of myself. Take all that. What's the version of you? How would you build that? Right? Orange t shirt? Stand up? All right. Thinking about this, what would you say? Like, what are some unique things about you if you had to think of that caricature version? Like, what would that look like? So imagine, like, a genie appears, not Will Smith, okay, Robin Williams, not a cuck genie, a real genie, <laughs> doesn't inject you with cuckness, but with, like, here's a wish, I'm going to inject you with charisma. What does that look like? Try to describe it best. You don't have to act it this time, I just want a logical explanation more so. So say you're talking about a friend, but that friend is you, supercharged on charisma. And I'm like, hey, so what's he like? Uh, uh, out there, uh, charismatic. Um, he's, um, what are some unique things about him? Um, he's very, uh, oh man. <laughs> it's tough, right? Yeah. Do a past audit on your life. Think back to your childhood. Like what were some, even just movies or shows you were kind of into? What's some music you resonated with? Um, what are some unique experiences? And we always think, oh, some epic experiences? Yeah, sure, but what about some sad experiences, some horrible experiences? Like, what makes you the unique person you are here today, and how can you then harness that to your advantage in this charismatic way? Mm -hmm. So, just think a little bit, okay, what's kind of unique about you? What do even perhaps some friends describe you as you, or family to describe, oh, that, you know, he's kind of like that. Yeah, I'd say people would think I'm pretty playful. Okay. I used to watch uh, lots of uh, stuff with dinosaurs, like Jurassic Park, it's pretty awesome. Um, Is that your favorite movie? Yeah, by far. Okay, good, nice. Yeah, um, I, I, I used to play a lot of video, video games, I'm doing that a lot less nowadays. What's your favorite video game? Uh, Wheel of Warcraft. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I also use in my, in my uh, work as teacher. Uh, I, I teach, but then I'm nice. a little less type than normal. Normal, that's very normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what's the thing you're the most passionate about? What comes to mind hearing that? Uh, right now, my family. Uh, I'm starting family. Um, I'm getting married with my uh, soon-to-be wife pretty soon. Hey! Hey! Good man! Nice. Okay. Yeah. 
and we're gonna have uh, yeah some some babies uh, pretty soon. That's what hey. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that uh, phase of life. Well, let's just take that. So that's actually great. Great awareness. What would then, if you think, okay, what would be a kind of a caricature version? Again, not knowing all the details, but just off the top of my mind, what would I think? Okay, well, what about if you rocked up to this event wearing, first of all, a Jurassic Park t-shirt? Just fully owning it, just like you're the Jurassic Park guy. Oh, yeah. um, you know, you're there and it's like, okay, Jurassic Park, you also like the World of Warcraft. Uh, you could even have, like, just walk around with your, I was going to say it's a video game, but like your World of Warcraft books and comics and stuff. And you're just like this kind of like, yeah. you kind of lean into even like the more nerdy side there and just own it and just make it part of who you are. Like you said, you're also very passionate again about your wife, your future, I mean, upcoming wife. Yeah. Uh, so family's important to you. So it's kind of starting with those things, amplifying it. And then also this would be then the next layer for you. And do this, of course, at home after the fact. All of you do this. Think what are some key stories that are linked with those specific things. So if you even think Jurassic Park or dinosaurs, great. You could view that, like I said, as a whole, as a theme, like wear the shirt. Or you could think what are some stories about me as a kid or growing up or some funny stories, some shocking stories that are kind of linked to dinosaurs. And if it is something you're passionate about, talking about those stories should bring that smile to your face just as you talking about your, you know, like your future <gasps> brought that huge yeah. smile to your face. Yeah. So it's that type of introspection there. But great job, man. Give him another hand. Come on. Cool. Let's see. You, stand up. Describe once more. The genie appears, whoosh, injects you with charisma. Imagine all your fears are gone. Every, you're just in that place of power. What would that look like? And say you were not talking about you, but like that person is your friend. And I ask you about your friend. So, so tell me about your, um, your friend. What's she like? Uh, well, mainly blocking people by standing around animals all day. <laughs> okay. A little bit scared right now. That's okay. That's okay. No, but she's, okay. she's feeling it. She likes being on her own, but she likes to be surrounded by people who inspire her to be better. Okay. What else? What's uh, describe her personality? Like, what's uh, what's she like? Here you describe. You're starting off great, but you're saying more so what she does and stuff. It's like, what's unique about her? Like, who are you? Mainly crazy. <laughs> Good. Okay, so a little crazy. Good. What else? Thought through. Um, yeah, always thinking one step ahead. Good. What else? Not prepared at the moment. <laughs> it's okay. That's why I'm here, maybe. I'll give you a second to think. I know you looked at her. Are you friends? Or no? Yeah. Stand up, stand up. Hello. What about you? I am very bad at speaking English, so she uh, will... Uh... Own it, own it, own it. <laughs> give her a hand, come on. Now, this... So, for both of you, again, very normal. <gasps> For everyone, like public speaking in front of a crowd is one of the top fears. So very normal that you feel triggered. Um, we'll talk about this later. This is something you can actually let go of. And proactively triggering yourself like this, key to transformation. Now with, however, like you said, a more limited vocabulary or English not being your main language, that should still not prevent you from being charismatic. Now, I'll give you a second to think, but just to explain this point here. Um, I was on a, a Zoom call with a client, and it was the same thing. I'm like, let's do this exercise. And he was German, and he's like, oh, a little bit of a choppy English, right? And it's fine you, if you don't know all the words, but it should not be choppy. Guess what? A lot of languages I don't know, but I'm still charismatic. If I speak German, I don't know Dutch. I know like, what is it, croquette, and that's it. And that's the only word I know. Um, but if it was, but even that, I'd be like, croquette, like I own it. Um, if it's like German, like my German sucks, I have a French accent when I speak it, people are shocked, but I'll roll with it. I'm like, I know, I spreche ein sehr bisschen Deutsch, I mit ein französischer accent, and that's just, that's just me, you know, and ich spreche, it was, it, like I'll, own, I'll still roll with the punches. That's the thing, roll with it. You're terrible at a language, in your mind it's like, well, that's the best way to speak. Roll with it. So to you, rolling with, the language, describe the caricature version of you. Who are you? Imagine zero fear, supercharged the extreme. You're like uh, the main hero in a movie. What's that person like? 
Now I'm very explosive. Explosive? Good. What else? <laughs> overwhelming. Good. Good. Explosive, overwhelming. What else? Um, passionate, I think. About what? What passion? What's, what are you really passionate about? Friends, family. Um, yeah. Okay. What is your nerdy, guilty pleasure? Oh. Um, I don't know. Okay. Like, what do you do for fun? Again, if you don't feel comfortable sharing it, don't. But like fun behind the scenes with friends or family, that kind of like nerdy, more childlike version of you. Like, what, what do you do? What excites you? Oh, um, yeah, a little bit joking. Yeah, changes. <laughs> uh, I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there I joke about it a lot. And yes, uh, animals. Okay. Yeah. What's your favorite animal? Um, yeah, horses, uh, sheep, ducks, cows. <laughs> okay. Back to you. Who are you? What do you do? What's your nerdy, guilty pleasure? Um, sitting alone in my stable and just looking at everything and figuring everything out and seeing how it goes and how it works. I like it. Figuring what out specifically? Well, animals have this specific way of behaving and they always just communicate without anything saying the most... A uh, strong mare in the group is always the one who gives the little notice, and she has her little minions. It's, okay. I think. So animals for sure. So yeah. definitely lean into that, like <laughs> animal lover to the extreme, which like you said, you'd be like again in the streets. Okay, so animal, let's take one more. If you had to say two things, animal is one, what's another thing? I think my friends. Friends? What about them? I think the amazing connection you can have with someone, you can just feel them and them change your mood in a minute. What's been one of the your favorite experiences with your friends? Um, that my best friend called me up, like I feel that you're feeling bad, what's up? Okay, okay, I like it. And you, best experience with your friends? One of them? She, she's my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I am the experience. Well, actually, I, I'm curious, <laughs> I'll get back, but best friend, you don't have to stand up. Seen a bit from the outside, how would you describe, like say she was like the hero in a movie, like superhero yeah. of a movie, um, what would her character be like? <laughs> crazy is the thing, it's like well, crazy yeah, for sure. Crazy. Well, crazy in what way? How so? Uh, she, if I want to do something crazy, I know I can just call her and be like, all my friends, all the other friends will just say like, no, that's too much, you know, I'm scared, I don't want to do that. And she's like, let's go. Okay, <laughs> let's good, do it. good. Like, she doesn't know you. I took her hair. And, I'm like, and now you're after like, here we go. I told her, he's also crazy, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. Just feel it. Yeah. And she, she does things, she dares to do things. Nice. So back to you, one more from you. Mm -hmm. On top of that, so crazy and? What was your question? How do you say crazy in, in Dutch? Gek. Gek and und. And what's your favorite? Oh. Yeah. Uh, mm, yeah. Powerful. Yes. <laughs> Powerful, okay. Yeah. Favorite movie? Narnia. <laughs> Narnia? Yeah. Okay. Give him a hand. Come on. Good job. Have a good seat. Good job. Okay. So, again, a lot more introspection to do, like at home, but like with this type of exercise, and it brought up a good point, there's nothing that is ever, quote unquote, bad. So even, for example, you hear crazy, what does society say? Oh, don't be crazy, don't be crazy. Like, no, 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 it's like, own that, own that. Be a little crazy. You know what's crazy? Being bland and trying to fit in, being a robot. That's crazy. Now, of course, anything could be taken too far. Like we said, don't be the wiggle worm. Don't be like, oh, crazy, well, here we go. And now you're just, this is, no, no, no. But leaning into that a little bit, sure, why not? Right? Like you were saying with your friends, like if she's like the more outgoing one, then oh, if, if you were the hero of a movie, you'd be this kind of, hey, let's go, the, like the adventurous type, lean into that. That has to be part of your authentic, charismatic self. And knowing this too, this doesn't mean you have to be that all the time, but you can kind of audit throughout your day where, you know, say if crazy is one, you can say throughout the day, am I being crazy enough? Or not. Maybe then again, stifledness, shyness, fear of what people think gets in the way, right? Same with um, you with uh, the, the animals and stuff. You can also audit. It's like, well, am I leaning into that? Like, is, am I perhaps not talking about that enough? Amp it up. Okay. Then it's combining it with calibration, but it's really tuning into it. And also asking yourself, like, what are those kind of nerdy behind the scenes things you're into? Right? Like, one thing I love doing, um, 
I only do with my family though, is um, playing card games and stuff. Super nerdy, I love it. Uh, when it comes to music, I love music, played guitar since the age of eight. I have my, my favorite bands and stuff that, that are my legends, but then my guilty pleasure is I'll occasionally listen to like these super girly little songs and I have my little girl song playlist and I love that too. All those things play into who I am and play into my conversations. And when people also even sense on a vibe level, so we're talking content, but it, they are intertwined. Foundation is the vibe, but even at a vibe level, when people sense that, like you're just being you, you're just owning it, and you're owning something that is so real that most people would be too scared to own. One, it's extreme, there's that magnetic pull, that aura, if you will, but it also allows that person to do the same. We call this the law of state transference. Whatever you feel, another person will feel.